Planck is a mission that will measure this light that last interacted with anything else 400,000 years after the Big Bang, which allows us to take a snapshot of the universe when it was very, very young. And when it was very, very young, it was also very, very simple. Whereas the universe today has stars and galaxies and clusters of galaxies, the universe then was almost completely smooth, except for tiny, tiny ripples that were about one part in 100,000 more dense or less dense than, the, than nearby. And uh, that's why when we look out with something like Planck, what we see are temperature variations that are 3 degrees Kelvin on average, and then 3.00001 degrees Kelvin someplace, and 2.9999 degrees Kelvin somewhere else. The two most important things I'd like to measure from Planck, first, are just the seven or eight numbers that describe the universe on the very largest scales. What is it made out of? How old is it? Uh, how is it expanding over time? Uh, numbers like that. The other important thing is, of course, hopefully, what we don't know. We'll, we'll get lots of information from Planck, but some of it will not work with our theories, and that's going to be the most exciting stuff. Planck will be the most sensitive and also the highest resolution instrument we've ever had for measuring the cosmic microwave background. The cosmic microwave background, or as we sometimes call it, the CMB, is this light that last scattered off of something else when the universe was about 400,000 years old, when instead of being made of neutral gas mostly, the universe was instead made of ions, which are the protons of the gas and the electrons of the gas separate from them. And that means that things scattered a lot more than they do today. The light comes from the sky over here, bounces off first the mirror up here, then the mirror down there, and then goes to the detectors, which are the gold horns that you see down at the bottom. And those horns each have one individual detector, each of which is like one element of your CCD camera. And by combining those 50 or so detectors, we can eventually build up a map of the whole sky. The previous uh, satellite that measured the CMB was the WMAP satellite from, from NASA about 10 years ago. Uh, this will have much higher sensitivity. That is, its errors on every measurement it makes will be smaller. And also, it will have much higher resolution. That is, where WMAP had one pixel on the sky, Planck will have about uh, 10 or 20. Imperial College has been involved with Planck since its inception. And most recently, we've been involved in what seems like a very mundane task, which is working out how exactly we're going to know where the satellite is pointing at any given time. When you're on Earth, you know how, where your telescope is pointing because you know where you are. But in space, that's much, much more difficult. And we have to do that with the data that we get from the satellite. Imperial will have two separate sorts of tasks with Planck. The first are just data processing, that is figuring out where Planck is pointing as a function of time. But then eventually what we'll do is we'll be involved in the extraction of the best science that we can from Planck. We'll be making maps of the sky, we'll be, we'll be extracting the small number of numbers that really describe those maps, and then eventually measuring the parameters that describe the universe as a whole. This ball represents a picture of the universe taken in the microwaves, which is the way that Planck views the universe. And this red band is the Milky Way galaxy, which unfortunately is just dirt as far as we're concerned. It's a contaminant that we have to get rid of. But everywhere else, what you see are the hotter and colder spots representing more and less stuff in the early universe. But that's only a tiny, tiny fraction, more or less stuff where it's more stuff where it's red and less stuff where it's the dark blue. And it's those tiny fluctuations that Planck will be measuring.